um, see how you're feeling this morning, or morning for me at least. It's uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time uh, for me today in Northern California. I wonder what time it is for you folks, where you're all uh, tuning in from. Can everyone, can everyone see me? Just making sure, because I'm not seeing, oh, there we go. There we go. All right, perfect. Ta-da! I'm definitely online. Okay, <laughs> it wasn't coming up for me, just wanted to make sure. Um, all right, so um, as I was saying, this is going to be um, the second challenge um, in this new round um, of challenges for the two weeks. Um, and we are going to be doing um, a challenge today on like creating a style guide. Because as I said before, um, this two weeks of classes is based solely on creating a series. So creating a personal series that is totally unique to you um, as what is possibly the very first challenge that you will be doing for the new year. Um, um, and on top of that, we're going to be kind of spicing up our Behance pages um, because it is a new year, kind of like adding a little more pizzazz and things to our profiles, as well as designing elements and assets that we can use to create a case study for our new series. Now, this series can be anything you want it to be. If you're an illustrator, you can choose to do some illustrating or painting. Um, if you are a graphic designer, you can instead design like maybe some badges or some icons or some logos. Um, you could even choose to design, you know, spend a day or a week um, designing each individual uh, letters for a font, because I know that there's some folks in chat who were interested in creating fonts. But whatever you want to do, whatever calls to you, um, make this one, make this whole project about the kind of design, the kind of creation that you love. Um, also, quick reminder, if you're over on the YouTube channel, please head over to behance.net slash live, because that is where I'm going to be reading the chat. And I want to make sure that you don't miss anything, that you don't get um, you're not wondering who I'm talking to and where all the helpful links are that I'm going to be talking about this morning. I want to make sure you have everything you need. Um, Afroja, it's good to see you. Um, Kara Butler, welcome back. Uh, JL, hello. It's good to see you, Sam Peterson. I see Susan and Sean and Chad and Sandrine. RB, welcome. General Kenobi, hello there. It's good to see you. Um, Mercurial, it's good to see you. Annie Santos, welcome in, everyone. Um, all right, let's get down to business, shall we? Um, I am going to first, I'm going to pop over to the landing page where um, you'll find everything you need basically to get involved with me. Um, if you go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, it will bring you here to the landing page. You know you will be in the right place. Um, for these challenges, if it says January 4th to January 15th up here at the top, if you're not seeing that uh, that time frame, maybe that means you're watching this in the future and this time frame has already passed and a new challenge is up. All you have to do um, in this case is scroll all the way down underneath um, all of our challenges here um, and you'll see all of the past challenges. So you can scroll here and find um, the proper uh, source files and things for January 4th to January 15th, which is what we'll be doing in these videos. Um, and then you'll see here you have like a little one through four um, that basically explains to you how all of this works. Every day we will unlock a challenge to you um, at about 8 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and you can come in here and you can get a little description of what we're going to be working on. You can uh, hit the get started button to download the source files that I've created for you. And you can also hit watch video. So if you need to come back at a later time um, because you either need to rewatch this video or perhaps you missed it, um, and this is good for future reference if you know you might miss one of the days um, upcoming uh, for these challenges, you can always come back, hit watch the video, and it will bring you to the archived video um, for later review, which is really helpful. Another thing you can do real quick um, is you can join the Discord. Um, so if you go to bit.ly slash PS Discord, making sure that P and S are capitalized, um, you can jump into this server, which I'm going to pop over to here. Um, and basically what this is, is it's a wonderful community where you can come um, and share your work and get feedback um, from our mentors on everything that you're working on for the Daily Creative Challenge. And I'm about to go through the current challenge page so we can check out what everyone has done. So yesterday we made 
avatars where we edited a photo in Lightroom and then we brought it into Photoshop to add a little pizzazz to it with neural filters. Um, so this one is from Mercurial. It looks like Mercurial, Mercurial did um, kind of an edit for this profile picture as well as um, kind of use the neural filters to change what is in the lenses, which I really like. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and Snow, I noticed that Snow not only posted this, but also I think further up here, maybe we'll, we'll get to it when I scroll to it, but um, posted the images that they used for this composite, which is really cool um, because they're different images. Um, and this is neat. So we have like kind of a forest being, um, uh, kind of superimposed here over the lenses of the glasses and you can still see like the street and everything through it which is pretty cool um, and then we have uh, this one from Susan Holt who has it looks like applied a neural filter to the entirety of the profile picture which is pretty cool um, I like this um, Noyanka uh, or Noyanika I really like um, the subtle uh, kind of matrix E texture that you put into your glasses. It's a lot cleaner than some of the experiments we did yesterday and I think it looks really good and I also like the kind of green tones you added to our image. Um, we got one here from Ebony's who has, this is actually pretty cool, um, I like that you not only like kind of added to the glasses and changed up the colors of the image, but I also really like these like little patterns and things that you've added to this which makes it look really fun. Um, so that's pretty great. Uh, Mr. B. Smith. This is pretty fabulous. This is great. This went from like being a selfie um, or profile picture that someone took of you with, you know, their phone into being like almost an album cover. Uh, I think that looks really cool. So very well done. Um, uh, let's see in the chat. Make sure I'm not missing anybody. Um, good afternoon. Hello, Dan. It's good to see you. Uh, so many other awesome designers here. Yeah, there are some pretty fabulous people in the chat. Um, I do have to agree with you there. Um, it's good to see you, Sharon. Welcome. Um, let me scroll through here some more. And, and you know, unfortunately, I can't go through every single one on the stream today, but I will jump in here um, and, and message some of you folks that I couldn't get to. Um, Ken Crawley. I really like this, too, because I feel like there's such thing as overdoing the neural filters or any filters in general in Photoshop. And I felt like this was really cool because not only is, I mean, it's obviously very stylized. Like, I can tell that something has been applied to this image. Um, however, it's not overdone and distracting to me because I can still see all the details of the subject matter. Um, I think everything flows really well in this and I also think it's very clean because it looks like you may have cut him out and put a image behind him. Um, and I like it. I like it. I think it's very well done. Um, and then we'll take a look at Pillar C, um, who it looks like has posted, this is the original image right here, um, and then we have this version where um, they've cut her out and put her over another background, looks like a little composite going on in the back, um, and then replaced the texture on the lenses, which is cool. Um, so very well done. We do have, um, we are running out of time here, so I am going to jump over and see what I can do um, for our style guide uh, for today. But thank you very much for participating. I appreciate all of you folks sharing your work with me. Uh, but now let's dive into Photoshop. So if you went over to um, the landing page and hit this get started button, you are going to get a file that looks like this. Um, and this is just a, a, a file full of artboards that I have put together to help you organize things that you're going to need for future reference for your project. Um, and I have a little description in here. It says create a style guide for yourself or a fictional client, because if you really don't want to do a series, you can actually do um, something like a mock-up project for yourself, or maybe use these um, things as like a, a, a guiding point for a, a piece of client work that you're working on. Um, and I say first find inspiration on Adobe fonts, Adobe stocks, and Behance, then organize assets using CC library. So this is a little different than any like mood board challenges I've ever done in the past where uh, we are going to not only um, kind of sort a file of ours, like kind of getting things together, but we're going to create a library today so that we can drag and drop things as we go throughout our project. Um, 
uh, each day of our challenge. Uh, so the first place that I'm going to go actually um, is uh, I'm going to go gather some colors that I think would be right for my project. I'm going to gather fonts, I'm going to gather images, um, but I have a sample project section here that is, I call it sample projects, but what it really is is like reference. So not just images that you may use, um, but reference for this project. Um, and what I'm going to add in there is, um, as I mentioned, my project is going to be, I'm going to do um, every week, I'm going to illustrate a portrait um, of an Animal Crossing character because I've been testing out um, a new um, kind of style um, of painting recently that I really love. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag um, my, let me see, I'm going to drag my own previous work into um, this file as reference so I can kind of keep my eye on the ball. Um, so I'm going to zoom in here because it has like colors and things that I really like. I'm going to make sure that in my layers panel I'm selected on the sample projects um, and then what I'm going to do is drag in some of these portraits that I have completed um, to get myself like kind of a good starting point. So there is one of the portraits um, and as you can see, they're like very painterly. It's not a style that I am used to. I usually do things that are much smoother and cleaner than this. Um, but that's kind of my challenge here is like to see how long I can continue um, to develop this kind of um, this kind of work um, and what it can develop into. So I've done this one. Um, I'm gonna throw this one in there as well because this one was fun to do. Um, we'll throw that in there. Boom, I'm gonna bump it up like so. Um, I'm gonna add maybe, oh, okay, so here's one that I did in the same style that's not actually Animal Crossing, but was just like an elaboration on the detail. This is a little Krampus that I painted for the holidays in this same style, um, and I really like it. So I'm going to leave those in there. That kind of gives me you know, like an idea of what the rest of the project is going to look like as I start to develop these portraits um, and continue to paint them. Um, and then I'm going to add some colors. So I have like some interesting um, samples. Let me grab um, some colors. So let's go to Adobe Stock um, or Adobe Color, excuse me. Um, you go to color.adobe.com. You can go to Create, Explore, Trends, and Libraries and kind of look through here at um, what you can get. I really liked these colors here um, from the fashion section of the trends page. Um, so you can do a lot of different things here. You can straight up click add to library um, and add these swatches to your library or you can download them um, as a JPEG, which is fine. Um, you can come in to create and you can literally come down here and start creating um, a color palette of your own. If you prefer to, to do things that way, that is fine as well. Um, and it's fun. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. So you can come in and really personalize and customize, and then you can save that here as well to, um, a library that you have, as long as you're logged in to your Adobe, um, Creative Cloud. Um, but let me drag this over here again. I'm going to snag this image, make sure I'm on my colors and have that open and I'm gonna actually drag this over here to my colors. Um, and not only does it give me some great colors to work with, it also gives me um, the codes for them, which is cool, or I could have opened it in my libraries, whichever you're more comfortable with. Um, but I like having the physical image in my colors. And as you can see, if I zoom out, um, it's already starting to be a little cohesive because um, I, some of these colors are already present in my sample projects, which is cool. Um, another way that we can get um, some pretty great reference is by going um, directly to Behance and just looking at cool um, images. Um, and you can take, uh, you can add images and whole projects into a mood board, um, which you can kind of use in conjunction with this project. So if I stay um, here on uh, Behance, um, I can go to discover, um, and maybe what I'll do is type in, um, for example, um, I think something that would really help me, even though it's not necessarily 100% related, is I can um, type in like indie 
game dev because I think that it will give me a lot of interesting characters um, with great colors, things that are like more rounded and stylized that I like. Um, so here's here's something. This is from um, an artist named Matt Sands. Um, and these are like cute little um, uh, kind of environments and things for video games it, look like, it looks like. So as I kind of go through Behance, I can also start adding things to mood boards that I think um, will really be inspiring, you know, for my project. So that's a pretty cool one. Um, I can save this one to a mood board. Let's say create mood board. And I'm going to call this um, DCC January... 2021 so I remember why I created this mood board um, and I'm gonna go ahead and save it there we go so I have some cool stuff in here um, I don't know what soaring heights is but I think that it's actually a pretty like the cover has pretty cool images on it so I can scroll through here this is actually really cool I'm gonna I'm gonna add this one um, to here too. shout out to I believe um, uh, Akshay Barwani, um, well done with the Soaring Heights project. This is pretty darn cool. Um, and you can go through there, gather things into a mood board um, and use that for reference as well. Um, another place I recommend going to is um, finding stock images. Um, so if you go in here um, to stock.adobe.com, I can come in and I can search for images, um, videos, audio, templates, 3D stuff, whatever I want. Um, but for those of you who maybe don't have the ability to um, get stock uh credits if you don't have um, the ability to actually like purchase and license some of these images there are some really great uh, things that will be available to you in the free section if you go and make sure you're searching free um, we could type in something for example um, actually I'm just gonna put I'm gonna put um, video games in there because I feel like video games will give us something um, colorful and exciting and kind of like uh, uh, really vibrant and I think that's kind of what I'm going for for this so I'm going to say video games and see what we get because I might not get an image that really works um, as far as something that I'll use but I may get something ooh like this that has really really great colors this is really cool so I'm going to go ahead actually and license this because I love these colors um, I think that's really cool I'll just get a jpeg um, that's fine to me. It's saving to my um, my library for Adobe. Um, and these ones are actually pretty cool too. Um, I, I think maybe I will snag up this one as well. Um, so I have some pretty cool um, images now that I can use. I'll pull my window over here to my other monitor and then I'm going to come in to my images. And I'm gonna drop these into my images, like so. Um, now, like I said, these are kind of just being used as reference. That doesn't necessarily reflect um, the kind of uh, art that I'm gonna be doing. Obviously, you guys know I have a pretty stylized vibe that I'm going for for this, um, but it kind of helps me keep my eye on the ball. Like I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, this is neat. Um, the colors look really great, work really great together. I might actually sample some of these colors so I can come back to my colors panel. I'm gonna grab a shape, like a rounded rectangle. Um, I'm gonna hold Alt so that I can sample some of these colors, like maybe this orangey color. This is pretty cool. Um, and I'm gonna come in here and just create. Let me go turn the stroke off. Um, turn the fill on to that color I just sampled. It's a, it's kind of similar to the orange colors that I've already got going on here, but you know, I, I like it and I might end up using it in one of the um, images that I choose to do. So I'm gonna go for it. I can duplicate this shape and drag it out. Um, and then I can also come over and sample um, other colors as well. So if I come in here, can sample maybe this green color, um, something like this. Um, that's kind of an interesting green um, and so on and so forth. So I can continue to gather colors and then how much time do we have? We still have about five minutes. We can jump into fonts. Let's jump into fonts as well because I definitely don't want to leave fonts out. Um, let's go to uh, fonts.adobe.com, shall we? Type in emotional implosion and see if something cool comes up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's do it. Um, we don't have very much time left, but I'm going to go for it. Uh, 
and then I'll drag this over. Mm, actually, we only got a few things up, but this is kind of interesting. We got like a brain. That's actually kind of cool. So um, there is a, an emotional implosion brain um, there, which is kind of neat. Oh, I just actually typed in emotional implosion. Let's see. Nope, no emotional implosion, but that brain, when I typed in emotional, was actually pretty cool. Um, but anyhow, let's do the last step, and that is grab some fonts. Now, one thing you can do is you can come over here and look at the packs, um, which is kind of neat. In fact, I might actually view this pack. This is the Spark font pack. Um, you can explore font packs um, that designers have put together that I think is really helpful because sometimes what it helps me do, since I'm less familiar with um, choosing fonts and more familiar with actually like painting letters and painting characters um, is I find in the packs a lot of fonts that work hand in hand very well that maybe I might not have chosen um, myself for um, a project. So I can come through and I can look through all of these really great fonts. Um, I do like this Chuck Regular um, Abolition is one of my favorite um, fonts. Um, this Gothic Open Shaded Regular is actually pretty cool. Um, the Blenny is neat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and activate. You can say activate for 180 days. Um, so I have those fonts. And then let's see what else I can do. I'm going to come in and just explore fonts in general. So I'm going to type in the word fun because I know I want something like fun and cute. Um, and hmm, I'm kind of liking this. I'm kind of liking Funky Dory. I think that's actually really neat. Um, I might activate that font. Um, and then I wonder if I could, let's see, I wonder if I could just do like type in chunky because I want like a chunky font. Um, this one, oh, Chuck is already actually in, <laughs> it's already in the, um, the font pack that I just downloaded. So I'm just going to go with those. Uh, because I think that those are cool. I might spend some time later on grabbing some more fonts that I think are neat. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start um, dropping some fonts um, into the fonts panel here. So I'm going to write out um, Feb DCC 2021. Um, and I'm going to just size this up a little bit and throw this right here. Um, and then what I like to do is duplicate this and just drag it down um, a few times so that I have um, a font um, space to test out a bunch of different fonts that I will just add. Um, so that's fine right there. Um, I'm going to make sure that I, I'm going to like kind of stretch my library here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come through here and, oops, and start highlighting this like so and then I'm going to go through um, my fonts that I have activated um, and start to apply it. Um, so I'm going to use this Gastromond maybe possibly I'm not saying that that is you know like a done deal but I'm going to come through and I'm going to start just um, kind of adding this to it. I think let's see if I can um, and it might take a little bit of time um, for everything to uh, update so that I have all the fonts that I just added um, because I am doing this live um, so it may take a little bit of time but I can come through and choose even some um, from uh, fonts that I already like and then once this up updates live then I can start adding some of the new ones but you get the idea um, I can kind of uh, basically lay all of this out for myself um, so that I have um, one place where everything is, where I can get to all of my uh, different assets. And then the last thing I'll do is create a library. That is all the time that I have for today, so I do have to take off, but it has been a blast working with you folks. I can't wait to see your, um, your style guides, um, and I will talk to you tomorrow morning, um, but I gotta take off before it cuts me off. So bye everyone, and I'll see you next time.